one of my dream is side by side with uh, Jeremy Bundia in the Olympia stage. <laughs> Nobody outworks me. out from the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Joe and Sagabain, the very first home Filipino, grown. homegrown, native Filipino to compete at the Mr. Olympia in any division ever. What's that mean to you, dude? Like, it's a big deal. For me, it's a dream come true, yeah. It's every athlete's dream stepping on the stage. It's a big accomplishment. It's like opening the Filipino mindset that they can compete on the Olympia stage. It's like more than just a dream for me, but it's for everyone in the Philippines who don't believe that they can be professional athlete and step on the biggest stage in the world. One of the biggest things I want people to understand about Jovin and athletes coming from Philippines and other countries outside of the United States is how difficult it is to get here the journey that it is and uh, how fortunate a lot of us are here in the States in regards to our resources, in regards to our finances, and in regards to the opportunities to compete for an opportunity to make it to the Olympia stage. It's a whole different process and a whole different journey, a whole other mountain to climb when you're doing it in the Philippines and other countries like that. The average income for a Filipino, you said, was 15,000 pesos a month? Yes, yeah, that's around 260 plus dollars a month. $260 a month, I mean, we eat that in protein in a, in a week probably. Yeah. You know, so how do you manage to compete and do everything that is needed to be done to be successful on, a, on the bodybuilding stage. Before I start my prep, we, uh, um, we always save first for like a year for a one whole prep. And we focus our money on a more regular food than the expensive one. We're eating chicken and eggs every day just to hit our protein. We don't eat beef, salmons on a regular day. Being here in, in the States the past week and a half, it's how so, different it is. So much different, Kuya. Like the chicken breast here is, I can eat it all day, Kuya, without, uh, without puking. In our country, the chicken is hard as a paper when you eat it. It's, dry. it's like paper and your jaw will lock we we'll get luck when you're eating it um, every every uh, every two to three hours. And it's hard to it's get. A, it. It's hard to find chicken out there. Too, yeah, right? it's a, sometimes there are grocery stores like we have one across the street. We have yeah. one down the street. Yeah. You know, there's limited grocery stores or places to buy protein. Yeah. And everybody goes to the spots to get it, so a lot of the times they're sold out. Yes, yeah. So how do you make do when that happens? What do you do? I buy the chicken breast with the skin. Then clean we it. skin it, yeah, we clean it just to get the pure lean chicken. Yeah, as far as like your message to these young guys, I mean, the, the resources, the opportunities for these guys in the Philippines is, is, is not nearly as prevalent. You know, sponsorship, you know, ability to travel, all these things, you know, are stacked up against you, but yet you're still here in California, getting ready to compete in Las Vegas at the Mr. Olympic 2022. We've trained eight days in a row saturday we had like i just had him take a light pump we did little shoulders and arms and some posing but um tomorrow's gonna be a rest day we're gonna train back today back's always a really tough day we're both really worn out we've been getting up at 6 6 30 every morning going to the gym for about 60 to 75 minutes cardio stretching uh, rehab exercises and we're tired he's tired especially because he's been on low carbs he had one repeat day but he's generally on low carbs, doing about, well, you're around like 60 grams of carbs a day right now. 60. Around 60. So tomorrow's gonna be an off day. We're gonna relax a little bit. But in the meantime, today's back day. We're going all out. 60 grams of carbs, but full day of workload. <laughs> as hard as everything was leading up 
and you had all those obstacles that you had to overcome, you know, what was it that gave you that motivation to push through and not give up on yourself despite having all those things in your way? I can't give up because um, it's for my family future, Kuya, number one. This is my passion, so I want to pursue it and prove myself that I can be better than I was before. It's my only choice. Um, you know the train road? Okay, the train, yeah. I grew there. Our house is just in the train road. So you grew up, you know, with not very much money. Yeah, we don't have enough money. To see where you're at right now, from where you came from, it seems like you're living a dream that you've always always wanted, right? Yes, you're, yeah. you're following what you what your plans were. Yes, yeah. At what point did you realize that this was something that you was within, within your reach? I'm sure a lot of kids, young guys in the Philippines that grew up in a similar way that you are, they don't believe that they have an ability to, to surpass that or escape it. You know, what kept you motivated to want to bring yourself out of poverty and, and give yourself a better life. What, what, what was it? What can you give? What advice can you give these young guys that are that were in a similar situation that you're in? Based on my experience, Kuya, is that I have nothing to lose. So I can, pain will be just temporary. So if you think um, you're doing the right way, you just need to keep moving as long as, as long as, um, wala kang tinatapa ang ibang tao. Ang pinaka-ma-advise ko sa mga young athletes is always trust yourself. There's always ups and downs, but you need to keep going. You always ask help from God, from Papa Jesus, so you will have a clearer mind, peaceful soul, and I know he will guide us in a better place. I've been to the Philippines, you know, we, I went out there myself and I see the sacrifices. You know, I saw some guys that show up, that I showed up to check-ins that they even weren't even wearing shoes. You know, the sacrifices that are made to do this, it's not just a hobby for you, this is a, the lifestyle you've chosen. He's taking a risk as a career on this in order to strike it big and you know, so far that's what he's doing. Being here at Olympia Stage is striking a big form and it's giving him a platform in a way it gave me a platform to become successful. And, you know, I want him to be able to capitalize on this and understand that he is leading a whole generation of young athletes in the Philippines to potentially a better life if they do it correctly. And Joe has done it the right way. And he's, I've known him for five years. We met back in 2017 um, in Manila. He competed in an amateur show and he won, he won the overall, right? Yes, yeah. And I, I went up to him after the show and you know, shook his hand and told him how great he was. He barely spoke any English at the time. And I remember telling him like how good he was and I always thought, I always believed in him. I offered to coach him because I saw his potential out there and um, I wanted to see him succeed. And I remember our conversation and he didn't really believe in himself thinking he'd become a pro. And I was already thinking way past that. I was like, this guy's going to be pro. He's gonna be on Olympia stage one time. It was before Olympia in 2018. I came out yeah. to the Philippines and we sat down and we were planning on you turning pro that year before yes, I competed. Yeah. And we planned it all out and I told you, I believed in you, believed that you could make Olympia. Yeah. And you know, a lot of work had to be done. And it's been four or five years of continuously grinding and you know, having all these opportunities open up just to have a lot of these opportunities shut down. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to prep for 16, 20 weeks for a bodybuilding show in the, and then three days before you get told you can't do it because you can't travel to go compete. The night visa. And to have that happen multiple times, you know, that's, it's easy to get frustrated and be like, it's not worth it because he has to sacrifice so much on these preps, more so than a lot of us here in the States have to sacrifice. And to not give up on all that, all that money wasted, all your time wasted, all that, putting your body through the stress, and be denied to compete multiple times, and it's still getting back up after that and pursuing your dream of making Olympia stage, you've done it, man. Like, it's, it's really admirable. Being 18 days out right now, I think you're in the best condition that you've ever been in right now. This is the best you've been, even before your previous show, a week out. You're bigger, you're fuller, you're drier. How do you feel 18 days out? Where's your mind at? How are you feeling during training? I feel good. It's hard. 
because I always get hungry but I am more motivated because uh, first of all um, I'm with the four-time champ okay Jeremy everyone's idol of course my number one idol so I have no excuses so I can do 100% of myself even it's hard. You know, he hasn't missed a single meal since he's been here. All he does is he sleep and train. I think he's left the house a few times. I've asked him if he wanted to go do anything. He wants no distractions. He wants to train, he wants to rest, and he wants to focus. And that's all he's been doing. We know that he's doing everything he needs to do to bring his best package. There's not gonna be any excuse for the last three and a half weeks. We're gonna do everything correctly. And, and that's what it's really gonna take to, be, to stand next to the best in the world and potentially become the next Olympia champion is being perfect. And that's what we said in our first video out here that we put out last week saying that it's gonna be perfection from here on out. And so far, he's been absolutely perfect. And we got 18 days more to go. Yes, he's hurting right now, but these are the weeks that you gotta grind. This is These are the weeks that separate you. Once you get to peak week, it, it becomes fun. He, we're gonna go travel to Las Vegas. He's gonna see all the lights. It's gonna be fun. Peak Week's always fun because there's a lot of excitement around Olympia. I'm really excited for him to experience his very first Olympia. I remember my very first Olympia, landing in Vegas, walking into the hotel, seeing all the posters. You know, it's a dream come true. You get your Olympia jacket, but no better feeling. Yes, yeah. No better feeling putting that I'm jacket on. I'm excited on that jacket yeah, also. It's gonna be a dream. You're gonna, you're gonna meet all the guys you see on Instagram. Everybody's at the Mr. Olympia. It's the largest bodybuilding event in the world. And it's back in Las Vegas this year at Planet Hollywood. It's being streamed uh, too on pay-per-view, so for you guys that aren't gonna be able to come, make sure you guys go stream. If you guys are in Vegas, make sure you guys come out to uh, meet the Olympians on Thursday. Come meet Joven, take a picture with him, wish him luck. All your support is super appreciated. You know, we, we read the comments. Philippines, we love you guys. Thank you for standing behind us, standing behind Joven and uh, really showing your love. It motivates this guy. Like he sees that stuff and it lifts him up. So keep it coming. We really do appreciate it. Joven, you're, I'm proud of you, bro. Like, you've come a long, long way. I think you got even more ahead of you. You know, you have a bright future. I think you can do a lot in this sport, and um, I'm really excited to see what's to come. But we got one thing on our mind right now. We aren't thinking past that. What's that? The 2022 Mr. Olympia. Another plate it is. Boy's hungry. He wants to eat. Boy's good. Oh. Okay, Jeremy did eight. We will do ten. We will at, we will at work there, Jeremy. <laughs> the only person allowed to. The only person I demand to. Better, better outwork me. In one gym. You will only see like two to three machines for back. I know, I've trained there before. The gyms are a lot smaller than here in the States. Limited equipment. Limited equipment. Okay. I told you, Jeremy, I don't have good gym clothes because we're just wearing like a old sandals and shorts in the Philippines because it's hot. This grip is not available in the Philippines. So you need to order it internet outside of the Philippines to get one. He also gave this. My head is pounding. That's how you know it was a good one today. 13 more days till we fly out to Vegas. I'm really excited for Joven. It's, it's been a, a long journey for him. He managed to find a way to overcome, and I think that's something we can take away from, anybody can take away from watching Joven's journey is that not everything's gonna go your way. There's always gonna be obstacles. There's always gonna be things in life that are gonna try and set you back. And it's how you approach the situation, how you interpret the situation that's gonna dictate the outcome. Every, every obstacle he's came across, he's had to find a solution. And uh, that's where I think he's found his success is that constant grind and never taking no for an answer. Um, 
to be a part of his journey is a big deal and that's why I'm putting so much of my time and energy into it because first off, I love this guy like a brother. He's a good dude and good things deserve to happen to good people and he belongs to be here. And um, second, you know, this is history we're making for, for the Philippines. And in fact, that could be a part of it as an honor. And third, is there's gonna be kids five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, that wanna be bodybuilders or physique competitors. And they're gonna come back and watch the blueprint that was laid by Joven and myself. And they're gonna follow that. And to be a part of somebody else's success five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road is an incredible thing. And to be laying the, the groundwork and the foundation for these young and upcoming Filipino athletes, it means a lot. And I think we take a lot of pride in, in leading the way for us, for our people. And especially Joven being from the Philippines, being the OG Filipino, you know. Nobody else, I think, can represent better. You guys were 18 days out from the biggest show in the world. Joe was about to make a statement. We appreciate your support. Keep following along. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. You show your support, you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Sa lahat ng mga kababayan ko dyan, uh, maraming salamat sa support nyo sa akin, sa mga uh, nag-aabot ng tulong, sa mga gustong mag-aabot ng tulong. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyo. And sana um, hindi lang ako yung makatapak ng Olimpia kundi mas marami pang Pilipino yung makasunod sa yapak natin and sana mas marami tayong maingan yung kabataan na iporso yung pangarap nila para sa future and para sa ikasasaya ng buhay nila and para sa ikararangal ng ating bansa Ayan. maraming salamat and shout out sa team ko sa team KG yan Rat Pack yan and kina Senator Bong Revilla maraming salamat sa mga tulong kay QM Sir Kerwin Go and sa lahat ng mga tumutulong pa at nagbibigay maraming salamat po sa inyo Waking Family maraming salamat 